Bandai Namco. If you didn't know, they do make other games that aren't anime related, but I think anyone who considers themselves a part of the anime gaming community specifically, whether it's a Naruto or Dragon Ball game, you've probably heard of this company at least once. They are the HGIC of anime games the head guys in charge, at least when it comes to publishing them. Now, the reason I'm making this video is to kind of warn fellow YouTubers, especially the ones coming up, to not make the same mistake that I and a few others have that kind of left us at a pretty weird spot. If you know what my channel is about, I think we can all agree that I am a big fan of Naruto. You could even go as far as to say that I love Naruto games and my channel is pretty much dedicated to them. The mindset I had the past year on YouTube was to feed into the views and subs as much as possible while improving my work. And as much as it was benefiting me in the short run, eventually it was going to come and bite me in the butt because that's all I was doing. I never once tried to expand my content, you know, reach out to other creators. And because of that, you know, at a time where Shinobi Striker content is as dry and boring as it ever was, there is nothing to upload on that game that hasn't been done already. And again, because Naruto content was all I was doing at a time like now to where fresh Naruto content is nowhere to be found, I was stuck. I never really got a chance to show my audience what I'm really about, not until at least this summer. And because of that, nobody really wanted to watch my content for me. My one hope in finding a positive in all this was of course a new Naruto game. But it is now early October and we still don't have any news on a Naruto game. Yeah. I am pretty upset that it took me this long to finally get it, that relying on Bandai in hopes of feeding me content in order for me to grow was the worst move I could have done. Bandai has made some very very questionable decisions. One of those is giving a Naruto game title to a company of, well, at the time, 20 people. So Leo, the team behind Shinobi Striker, had around 20 people when developing the game. Naruto is one of the biggest anime franchises ever. I don't get it. I probably never will. The only logical answer I could give, which even then is very unlikely is that they couldn't find anybody else. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Solil can't make games. And actually, season one of Naruto Shinobi Strikers, when they had less people, was more enjoyable than season two and three. To me at least. And yeah, I know it was buggy, but it was also not as toxic as it is now. And the devs actually cared more about the game then compared to how much they do now. And that's a fact. Anyways, my point being that I'm not saying Solil isn't capable of making games. They can. They just don't have the resources or the money or the people to handle titles like Naruto. And to be honest, with how they've been treating Shinobi Striker the past year, I don't know if they could even handle a sequel. And when I say sequel, I mean a much, much more improved overall game. You know, can they keep it consistent? Correct me if I'm wrong, but season three is a clear cash grab. Why accept the bare minimum with just characters and cosmetics when we can get maps, mini games? I anything that isn't just characters but that doesn't seem like the case and yeah i know they don't have what cc2 has or spike or dimps but they've had time they've had two years and all we've gotten is one map that's not even part of the rotation it's for survival mode i hope some of you can understand my perspective on why this is a little frustrating as a naruto gaming youtuber because not only is strikers getting not enough real content to make videos on we have nothing to look forward to as of now for the upcoming future. I've seen a few people be like, well, maybe the next game got delayed for next gen. Yeah, that's a good point. That explains why we haven't gotten one in 2020 besides a mobile game. But again, it's October, you know, the 10th month of the year, and we haven't even gotten an announcement for 2021. Multiple other games, whether it was just an image or a cinematic gameplay, they've all been revealed. Now there's good news and bad news. The good news is that Bandai is contracted to publish a Naruto and a Dragon Ball game every year. It doesn't matter if the CEO of Bandai hates those titles with all their heart. As long as that contract is up and going, it has to happen. The bad news is the game is probably going to be trash. And I say that because of two things. One, most anime games that turn out to be pretty shitty just weren't given that much time. And two, not only has Bandai released some, you know, pretty trashy games the past couple years, they've gone away with it because for some reason, people keep buying them. Example, Spike Chunsoft. If you don't know who they are, they are the devs behind Jump Force, One Punch Man, a game nobody plays, and J Stars. Unlike One Punch Man, Jump Force and J Stars sold pretty well. And I can kind of understand why. You know, a battle arena featuring your favorite anime characters with all these transformations and big explosions. Yeah, it looks cool. But compare these games to some of the great arena fighters, they don't compare. Jump Force and J Stars literally fall into the category of wasted potential alongside 
Shinobi Striker. So here's my question. Would it be a stretch to say Spike could be the potential dev team behind the next Naruto game? Definitely not. Why? Because, well, it brings them money. At the end of the day, that's all that matters to them. Bandai will never give up on publishing anime games because it brings them money. You think because One Punch Man failed, they won't knock on Spike's door and ask them to make a Naruto game? They let a company of 20 people make one. Again, not saying that if they had the numbers and the resources, they wouldn't be capable, probably would, but that's besides the point because it's hypothetical. Like, imagine if Shinobi Strikers was made by Dimps. You know how much better the game would have been compared to what it is now at least? You can't just tell with Bandai. One moment a game like Dragon Ball Fighters touches shelves and five months later we get a hero nobody knows. It's just not reliable and too inconsistent. And you know, to be honest, I know there are a lot of YouTubers who are not like this and you know, to you guys who've been making your own content despite the numbers, salute to you. You've been doing it the right way. But to the YouTubers who, you know, rely heavily on a Bandai Namco game in hope that a sequel or the next franchise game will come out with some content to keep you going, stop now while you got the chance. Do not feed into the views and subs because when Shinobi Strikers or My Hero 1 Justice 2 ends, the next franchise game turns out to be trash. What are you going to do? You think you're going to pull 75% of the same viewership no matter what you upload? Try it out for two weeks and let me know how that goes. I know this seems aggressive and a bit harsh, but it had to be said because it's the truth. If you really want to grow on this platform, I don't know, potentially keep it as a future job or whatever, stop feeding in and make content that shows viewers that, hey, it doesn't matter if I play um, Friday the 13th or Xenoverse 2, I'm still an entertainer either way. Because people like Corey Kenshin, Afro Senju, KSI, they prove that they can entertain their audience no matter what they upload. That's why they're where they're at. So if you want a long lasting place in the platform that is YouTube, I think it's time to stop relying on Bandai Namco and bring an audience that is there for you and not for the game you play.